Hello and welcome to Decoding the New Economy. Today I'm joined by Doc Searles and we're going to talk about uh, privacy, trust and empowering customers. Uh, Doc, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, to kick off, um, you're here to talk about the Respect Network. Um, mm -hmm. What exactly is that? Uh, the Respect Network is a both a company and a collection of companies that have gotten together to basically make compatible services that work for the customer. Um, we've been, we in a general sense of business, have been working ever since Industry One, the Industrial Revolution, to fix every market problem from the seller side. So basically, this is about solving problems from the buyer side, but in ways that are good for the seller. And we need compatibility among those things. So there's an emerging category called personal clouds. Mm -hmm. Personal clouds are where, for example, if we do quantified self stuff, we have our Fitbit and our Nike and our Withing scale, and all those things are separate and are all producing separate piles of data. We should be able to integrate them ourselves and use them, say, to relate to our doctor or to relate to a health club or to relate to something else. And the personal cloud is where we will keep that data. Right now, lots of data is being collected on us that we have no control over. Yep. And there's going to be a new class of data that's the data we collect for ourselves or the companies share with us and we need a place to keep that. So cloud service providers are this new class of company that are helping us um, relate to businesses as individuals, as individual customers. And so the Respect Network is a collection of those worldwide. There's many of them and they're sort of allied companies and consultancies and other things that are working together with it as well to come up with compatible ways that they can offer substitutable services, essentially. Mm. Now, that's um, the, with the rise of things like we've seen Apple's um, health kit in the last few weeks being mm -hmm. launched, things like that. How do you see all of those fitting in? I, you know what? It, I take a very broad view of these things. Mm. Um, the internet, like we've had civilization for 10,000 years in the physical world. Sure. 18 years ago in 1995, we created a second world called the internet. Yeah. What the internet does is it puts everybody and everything in the world at zero distance apart yeah. at something like zero cost and infinitely more capacity for interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. This is a new condition. We have barely begun to discover what we can do with this. Yeah. So I, for, I'm for everybody bringing whatever they can to the table mm -hmm. and Apple bringing what it brings. That's cool. Yeah. I'm mostly interested, however, not in what the big companies are doing, which is always very interesting, but what's happening at the grassroots right. where people are dealing directly with, with customers and new entrepreneurs are coming along saying, here's, some, here's a new territory where I can, um, where we can have a new advantage that the big guys don't have. Mm. So Apple is very good at like giving you the complete experience, whatever that is. Right. And and I like them a lot. I use their stuff. I've got an iPhone in my pocket, and you know. But but they're you know it's all great as long as it's all Apple, right? Right. So they may get along well with the stuff that we're talking about, and they may not. We'll see. Yeah. Mm. Now, going back a step, um, you wrote a number of chapters on the Clue Train Manifesto on this. Yeah. And it strikes me that rereading re those before this interview, mm -hmm. I got um, this impression that um, maybe the hopes for that have been lost with the uh, with these big companies like Apple and Facebook and Google and that um, hoarding the information. Did, what's your thoughts well, on that? Well, first of all, we, we wrote the Clue Train Manifesto in 1999. Yeah. And at that time, Microsoft ruled the world. <laughs> right. Okay. Apple was considered a failure. Yep. Um, uh, Steve Jobs had come along yet, but they had like, the iMac and a couple other things, but it was still to be proven. Mm -hmm. um, Google barely existed, Facebook didn't exist at all, it was six, seven year, years away, same with, um, same with Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and we wrote actually the Clue Train Manifesto in the environment of the dot-com boom, right. which was just a lot of speculative nonsense <laughs> in many ways, Yes. Um, in which on the one hand, we saw the internet, we being the four authors of the Clue Train Manifesto, as this whole new thing in the world that basically hit a big reset button on business as usual. Right. It did that. That is entirely, I think we're vindicated on that. And Clue right. Train as a word is tweeted many times a day. Yep. Um, what we have now are new industrial giants. I mean, Apple became an industrial giant. Microsoft has kind of faded uh, to a great deal. They haven't gone away. Um, Nokia was the number one. Um, um, smartphone company at that time, Absolutely. they're all but gone at this yep. point. Um, you know, every large company is just a color of a spore in a petri dish, okay? <laughs> right. yeah. And the blue will win over the red and then the red will take over the blue and then the yellow will come over here. Mm. But in the meantime, this all of them started small, yes. somehow. And 
what the internet does is it makes it possible for lots of entrepreneurs to come along and do new things in new ways. Mm -hmm. There are many more ways for things to prove out. Now, with the Clue Train Manifesto, um, I saw what you were talking about happening. I thought, wait a minute, we said markets are conversations, we said uh, we are not seats or eyeballs or end users or consumers, we are human mm -hmm. beings and our reach exceeds your grasp. Deal with it, but that didn't happen. Yeah. Our reach did not exceed their grasp. Mm -hmm. So that's why in 2006, I started something called Project VRM at the Berkman Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University. Hmm. And I was obliged to start a project when I did that, because at that time, fellows were expected to do projects. And the project I picked was basically finishing the Clue Train's work, in a right. way. I thought, wait a minute, I've also been an editor for many years for, for Linux Journal. I know how developers work. Hmm. I saw Linux go from nothing to something that there isn't a single company that doesn't use Linux at this point, including yes. every Android phone. Hmm. So, and I knew how developers worked. I thought, I need to encourage developers to empower customers and to prove that free customers are worth more than captive ones. One of the interesting areas of this is the connected shoe. I mean, this seems to me to tie <laughs> in um, the whole idea of the Internet of Things, analytics, yeah. cloud, personal information. Right. Okay, so the connected shoe. I'll do this quickly. This is a shoe. Yeah. This is a company called New Balance, right? They make a shoe. A company want to know what happens to the shoe, right? right? They don't just want to sell shoes. They want to sell you future shoes. They want you to be a loyal customer. Yeah. I would like to be able to feed back to that company what I do with that shoe. Mm. I can stick a QR code in that shoe and I can scan it every time I take the shoe off yeah. on my phone and program something uh, in a personal cloud mm. that will tell the other apps that, are t that I tie in with that. For example, yeah. my fitness, I have a Nike um, wristband or a yeah. Fitbit ankle band or, sure. and I have a scale that measures how much I mm -hmm. weigh or I have something else that's tied to the gym that I go to. Right. right? Um, all of those things are most meaningful when they're tied together. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, so, you know, it might be interesting to New Balance to know that somebody who wears size 9 quad E shoes has this amount of wear mm. when um, they're losing weight or when they're walking a lot or where they're, you know, one, one city may have more abrasive pavement than the next. I'm just making this up. Sure. But the interesting thing is that there's much more intelligence than a company can get directly from its customers yet already own something than they can get by following us around on the internet, which is the, the fashion right now sure. in business is following yeah. us around. So that's the real thing that the internet of things poses right now. Yeah. To me, the internet of things is about what we own mm -hmm. and how we build new solutions around that rather than just what we buy and having companies guess at us all the time. Yeah, now that's, um I'd be interested where you see that developing because that's one of the concerns I see with mm -hmm. the Internet of Things. That, uh, I mentioned Apple at the beginning of this interview. That yeah. They seem to be building their silo. We've got Google with Android. Over right. Apple. Do you see those silos surviving or do you see those falling over? I, feel, I see them falling over. Mm -hmm. uh, I see them falling over because the Internet itself is the base level for everything right yeah. now. The Internet is just a protocol. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say, oh, Telstra has the Internet or, you know, or, or some phone company, you know, uh, yeah. Vodafone or Verizon in the U.S. Sure. has the internet. No, they don't. The internet is a protocol. A yeah. Protocol is a way of getting along. Hmm. And all the internet does is reduce the zero of the distance between us all and yeah. everything we do. Hmm. So, so anything is possible on that. Yeah. So, you know, it's an interesting thing. Apple tried to, you know, had its own operating system for a long time. Yep. Apple now runs on BSD. Yep. It okay. runs in a form of Unix. Mm -hmm. So, for that matter, does, does um, Android, which runs yep. on Linux. Mm -hmm. you can, in fact, if you're a techie, you can get down at the command line level and sure. you can use both of those things. So what happened was Unix, which, by the way, the internet was developed on as well, yep. Um, ended up being the thing that runs everything. Probably in the long run, it's going to run Microsoft too, because Microsoft has <laughs> sure. their own little clothes thing. They just made their, they're going to make their first Android phone. Big mm. surprise, right? Yeah. So at certain points, all the silo builders realize, wait a minute, at the foundation level of this thing is something that's common to all of us. Mm. And then they start looking up the stack and saying, why are we isolating what we're doing in this one little part of it? You know, every company wants to have a unique offering. Yeah. But there have to be certain agreements. You know, in this country, we're going to drive on the left. You know, we're going to have these plugs that look like with the, the angles on it rather than straight up like they do somewhere else. Sure. But these are standards that we agree on, right? Yeah. And and that's similar here. We're mm. the, the difference with the Internet of Things and with personal clouds and all these other new things that are emerging right now is that we're just at the start right. of all of this. And here's a key piece. Every single leap forward has been one we've made on the individual side. Right. Computing used to be corporate. 
Mm -hmm. Personal computing was an oxymoron. It was a contradiction in terms. It's Only true. big companies did computing. Yep. Network, and then we had personal computing, and it was over. We could do more with our own computers than companies could do with their central computer. And that turned out, surprise, to be good for companies, yep. and not just for the individuals. Same thing happened with networks. We had lots of closed and private networks from Novell and Corvus and SciTech right. and a lot of forgotten names. Yep. And we got the internet and said, we didn't need any of those mm -hmm. anymore. We developed apps right on top of the internet. We developed ways of getting along on the internet. And that was because per people, individuals, mm -hmm. got personal power on the internet. Yep. Each of us has our own network now. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's worldwide, mm -hmm. but we can connect anything we want yep. on the internet. So we could bring in our Internet of Things. It's our Internet of Things. It's not theirs. Mm. But right now, the Internet of Things is being discussed entirely as, oh, it's Google versus Apple versus Facebook. Crap. That's, <laughs> right. None of those are going to own, own the Internet of Things. And yeah. on top of that, the Internet of Things is going to matter is me and my things, you and your things. Yeah. This is this is my Internet of Things right here. Yeah. By the way, this is also my privacy technology. Right. Privacy is non-controversial in the everyday world, but it's still controversial online because we haven't worked it out yet. Sure. You don't have manners there yet, mm. but we will. So we're in early days of the Internet uh, revolution. Totally. Right? Very early. That, very, very so early. So just to f uh, finish up on this, Tom, yeah. what excites you the most about what's ahead? Everything. <laughs> right. Okay. So the older I get, the earlier it seems. Right. right. So I've... You know, we're going to see, I mean, it's very easy to look at things in terms of, um, you know, the uh, Google, uh, somebody told me, an analyst told me, Google has destroyed 29 businesses. Right. No, it just changed those 29 businesses. You know, Uber right now is changing taxis and, sure. and all of that. And inevitably, it's going to change it. Mm -hmm. And that's good. It's actually yeah. good for that business. It's, it introduces efficiencies to that business that, yeah. you know, that they've needed for a long time. Um, personal clouds are going to do that. Whether... You know, whether it's going to be exactly as the Respect Network describes it right now yeah. or some other way um, matters less than the inevitability that it's going to happen. Yeah. It's all, everything is coming out of the implications mm -hmm. of having this protocol in the middle of everything that puts all of us zero distance apart. That is a, it's alien to the history of the human condition. Okay. We've always had distance, you know. We, 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 I grew up across the, the river from New York City. Hmm. We couldn't call New York City. It's yeah. against the rules. That's long distance over there, you know. Right. You paid more on the phone. Hmm. Now, nobody even thinks about that. Sure. You know, there, my, my son, who's now 17, my, old, my youngest son, hmm. asked me recently, what, li literally, what is the point of range with radio? Why would a radio station have coverage? Yeah. What's that for? Because his frame of reference is the internet. Sure. You can get that station everywhere in the world. Why would it have limited coverage in just one city? Yeah. Well, that's an old thing in the context of a new thing. Right. Right. It doesn't mean that radio station is going to go out of business. Mm. It means that let, they turn into you. Yeah. You've got a worldwide audience here. Mm. Right. You you don't you're, you're based in Australia, but this is on the internet. Yeah. It has you know galactic dimensions. This sure. is. And, and this is a power you didn't have before. Mm. You know, I was in radio, you were, you know, maybe you had a background in radio, I don't uh, know, but, yeah. so we had, you know, when I, when I lost my last job in radio in 1976, <laughs> right. it was over. You know, yeah. I was in a little town in North Carolina, there were a limited number of stations, it was done, I went into something else. You know, that's not the case now. Sure. Any one of us can do anything. And yeah. so that's the power, mm. that any one of us can do anything. You yeah. know, you want to see resourcefulness, look for where people are poor in the third world, for example. They're taking feature phones, doing things nobody ever imagined doing with, with smartphones even. You know, yes, sure. Currencies, they are exchanging currencies yeah. on these things, making up their own currencies. It's, it's wild. I mean, so I'm just very optimistic about everything. Yeah, and on that note, no, it's uh, great to meet you, Doc, and uh, keep Likewise. being optimistic. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for joining Decoding the New Economy.